your Maddox. I'm your biggest fan. For over 20 years, I've run one of the longest running humor sites on the internet. I've published books, worked on TV shows, and even video games. Along the way, I've met thousands of fans. Most of them have been awesome, but some, unfortunately, have become obsessed and tried to get into my personal life. This is the story of what happens when fans become stalkers. In January of 2017, Fanboy falsely claimed that someone used the N-word on my podcast network. He then encouraged people to contact my sponsors to drop their support. Fanboy was, and still is, obsessively looking for ways to attack and provoke me. But when he and his mob couldn't find anything on my podcast that could get me cancelled, they decided to wage a guilt by association campaign by expanding their search to people I knew and shows I had nothing to do with. For example, someone who had a show on my network said the n-word on a different show that didn't air on my network. I had nothing to do with it. The show in question was a private show behind a paywall. And again, I had nothing to do with it. I didn't say it and I didn't air it on my network. I'm not even defending the use of the word. But because of my loose association to the person who said it, and he had an unrelated show on my network at the time, Fanboy promoted the idea that it was okay to go after my sponsors because of this guilt by association. Because I'm a liar. Fanboy then lied and told people that I aired it on my network. It was such an egregious lie that at one point even his co-host pressed him and asked for clarification if the clip actually came from my network. He lied and said that it did, and then he added, it doesn't matter who said it. You said, I think that your sponsors would want to know what kind of shit they're supporting. Was this on the podcast? Or no. This no, was, was on his, say, his network, but um, it doesn't matter oh, who, no, it doesn't gonna matter who said it. Well, yes, actually, it matters a whole fucking lot who said it. When you're forming a mob to go after someone's livelihood, you better fucking make sure, or better yet, don't do it. But Fanboy lied and said that it was on my network. This didn't happen, period. He is a liar. I lie all the time, I don't care. He doesn't provide any evidence for it because there is no evidence for it. He said it as justification to attack my sponsors. In a leaked conversation, he posted a screenshot where I was telling someone I didn't air it on my network. But he not only doubled down without any evidence, but then he tried to rope in my co-host at the time with this guilt by association campaign. He called it a job lynch mob and explicitly encouraged people to contact the sponsors of shows if they disagreed with their content. Except Harry's wasn't sponsoring the person who said it, they were sponsoring me. And he was attacking Harry's despite the fact that I didn't say it and I didn't air it on my network. This was part of a coordinated attack by Fanboy's mob against my sponsors. In fact, one of the dipshits in the stalker mob helped coordinate some of these attacks before this incident, and he even used the phrase job lynch mob. What's especially nefarious about this guy is that he knew it wouldn't take much, estimating around 10% of the group to get the job done. And the reason he knew that is because he's the creative director for a marketing agency. He knew exactly how to attack someone's sponsors because he works in the industry. And unfortunately, these attacks worked. Harry's dropped me as a sponsor based on the stalker's lies. Fanboy went on and on about how horrifying it was that someone would use the n-word and even likened it to vandalism of your personal property. If somebody comes over to your house and writes, hey asshole on it, do whatever the fuck you want to them. Get a, do what, because the, do is the most that you can do under the law. That's why the law is there. Get them fight, whatever. Stop it fucking nothing because they fucked with you first. Now remember, these are their rules of engagement and the world they want to live in. Don't forget that because I won't. They want to live in a world where we use guilt by association to form job lynch mobs to go after people's livelihoods. I just want to know if if you're if both of you parties involved are a fucking sponsor of this cuz you so, should be horrified. Wow, he sounds really horrified. Holy shit, poor thing. Get this man some pearls to clutch. And what's especially egregious about this is that even if it were true, which it is not, it doesn't seem like the stalker or his hate mob would be the type of people who would have a problem with the n-word. In fact, they seem exactly like the type of people who'd use it themselves. How do I know? Because even though I didn't say it, 
You know who did? His entire fucking community. These are his followers. His contributors. His guests. His co-hosts. His moderators. And you guessed it. When you're raped by a pack of Fanboy's regular co-host and contributor at the time, Asterios Kokonos, jumped on the dog pile and went on and on about how no white comedian should ever say the N-word, saying he just wants one thing, for white comedians to not use the N-word. Except one of Fanboy's regular contributors and guests was a guy named Hazen Cruz, and this guy happens to say the N-word a lot. Well that's funny, because for a virtue signaling male feminist who thinks no white comedian should ever say the n-word, he sure didn't seem to have a problem palling around with him. Oops! You should be horrified! Fanboy and his hate mob are hypocrites who attacked my sponsors causing me damages based on something someone else said. This was purely a guilt by association attack. I don't believe any of these people give a flying fuck about the n-word. In fact, I think he and his hate mob are quite okay with the word. And to prove it, since we're playing the guilt by association game, let's just take a quick look to see who fanboy associates with, as long as we're playing by their rules. First, there is Stefan Molyneux, the white nationalist who thinks black people are collectively less intelligent, that low IQ, non-white people are genetically inferior, and that poor Germans were just protecting themselves from Jewish communists. Now, you might be thinking, lots of people book controversial guests like Molyneux, but Fanboy doesn't just promote and support his content. He contributes to him financially. Stefan Molyneux is a great example. Yeah, I good. love his content. I'm on his $20 a month support list just because I want him to be able to do this. I want to see it. I want to enjoy this content. Then there's the white supremacist Richard Spencer, one of the organizers of the Charlottesville white supremacist rally where neo-Nazis marched with tiki torches, chanting, Jews will not replace us. And if Richard Spencer doesn't look familiar, that's probably because you don't recognize him without a fist in his face. The Pepe's become kind of a symbol. He's considered to be the father of the alt-right movement and claims to have coined the term alt-right. Here are some choice words he has to say about Jews. Little fucking kites! They get ruled by people like me! Little fucking oxaroons! My ancestors fucking enslaved those pieces of fucking shit! Fanboy reached out to him numerous times and even some of Fanboy's dopey followers criticized him for fundraising efforts with Richard Spencer. And eventually Fanboy got his wish and did a podcast with Spencer. Except instead of repudiating Spencer for his anti-Semitism and hate, he praised him, saying that he actually respects Richard Spencer a lot. In the clip, Fanboy downplayed allegations of Spencer trying to punch his pregnant wife and even offered him advice. Richard, I gotta ask you flat out, <laughs> uh, did, you, uh, did you ever hit her? in anger or grab no, I never I never hit her in anger, no, absolutely not. I gotta ask you, because I, I actually respect you a lot. And of course, somehow they found a way to blame the Jews. Uh, Richard Spencer, she's your wife's saying that you tried to hit her while she was nine months pregnant. Please, a, nine, a woman who's nine months pregnant and he, he couldn't hit her? That's preposterous. She can barely move. She's the size of a hippo. I agree. Well, this is what happens when the Jews control the means of communication. They can use it for whatever petty little thing they want. At one point, Fanboy even sounded like he was flirting with him, Aww. complimenting him on his looks and likening him to a male model. And the flattery went both ways as Richard Spencer, the white nationalist, said he would subscribe to Fanboy's podcast. Richard Spencer, I gotta say, look, you look like a male model. You got a bad boy image. Um, but you're a smart guy. Like you're, I mean, obviously you're very intellectual. You drink wine for fuck's sake. I mean, you think about things so deeply. That's the kind of content you get at the Dick Show Patreon. I, I'm going to subscribe. I have to say, I, I, I'm not, I didn't know about you before I, I came on the stream. Then there's Nick Fuentes, the Holocaust denier and ethno-nationalist who thinks that blacks should get over segregation and that things were better when they were drinking out of separate fountains. They had to drink out of a different water fountain. Big fucking deal. Oh no, they had to go to a different school. Their water fountain in that famous picture. You know, even if it was bad, who cares? 
Who cares? It's better. It's better in general. We all agree it was better for them. It's better for us. Better in general. And he used cookies as an analogy for Jews, casting doubt into the number of Holocaust victims. The math doesn't quite seem to add up there. I don't think you'd result uh, in 6 million, maybe 200 to 300,000 cookies. <laughs> Moreover, if you look at the soil texture, it's really not deep enough for mass cookie storage underground. So what does Fanboy have to say about Nick Fuentes, the Holocaust denier? He loves him. And if you'd think he was just being flippant on Reddit, Fanboy said it directly to him on a call. I guess I'll see you around. Thank you, sir. I, I love you, you too, Nick. buddy. Have a good one. At one point, he even offered to help Nick Fuentes process payments after Nick got suspended on Patreon. Except now Fanboy can't because several banks have blacklisted him. Yes, actual banks have stopped doing business with this stalker, and he's found himself on the MasterCard blacklist, which is something I'd never even heard of before. Basically, it's a list that credit card companies keep to prevent illegal transactions, which can include known terrorists, drug dealers, money launderers, and people who've been caught child or human sex trafficking. Fanboy has been blacklisted by Bank of America, Chase, Discover, and MasterCard. You know you fucked up when even a bank won't take your money. And then there is J.F. Garapi, the white nationalist commentator who's been accused of luring an autistic teen in a pregnancy plot. According to court documents, the teen had the social and mental maturity of a child, and she couldn't dress or bathe herself without the support or reminders from her mother. Fanboy hosted multiple podcasts with J.F. where he said crazy things like if a woman is too difficult to live with, you should just inject sperm in her and run. Worst case scenario, if she's really uh, unlivable with, you want to inject sperm in her and then run. Normally when someone says controversial things like that as a host, it's your job to push back and challenge the guest on their views. But not Fanboy. Instead, he agreed with him. Is he wrong? If she's really intolerable, you just gotta inject her with that fucking sperm and then split. He's just saying what we're all thinking, Sean. All of the stalkers fraternizing with Holocaust deniers and anti-Semites hasn't gone unnoticed. Fanboy has even caught the attention of the largest neo-Nazi and white supremacist website on the internet, The Daily Stormer, where he's been referenced or lauded at least three times, including in this article about him that appeared on the front page of the website, where he was praised for his bravery for trying to process credit card payments for the alt-right. And the flattery goes both ways because he's retweeted the site's owner numerous times. This is a guy who has an arrest warrant and a $14 million judgment against him for harassing a Jewish family. You should be horrified! And this isn't just an innocuous coincidence. All these white supremacists in this circle seem to have attracted like-minded people to his community. This is the kind of shit this community posts. This is what they say. These are his followers. Contributors and people he associates with. But no guilt by association list would be complete unless I mentioned one of the biggest hypocrites to jump on the smear bandwagon, a guy who is a friend and regular guest of fanboys named Nick Ricada. He's like if someone made a video game character with a slider for charisma set to zero. Nick Ricada personally helped spread the lies that caused me damages. When someone makes false claims about you that causes damages, that's one of the criterias that meet the legal threshold for defamation. Here's what he had to say about my claims of defamation. Maddox, buddy, defamation is only defamation if it's not true. Everything sent to Harry's was true. Someone on your network dropped the M-bomb on live air, and last I checked, we live in an age where that's not okay. This is Nick Ricada. Well, Nick, last time I checked, we live in an age where that's not okay. I know my delivery wasn't as smug, but I tried. Nick, along with Fanboy, has been stalking and harassing me for years. For example, despite blocking him, he followed me around on the internet and left comments on my YouTube videos. And then when I blocked his account, he used another account to spam more, which is the definition of harassment. In fact, he knows this because he said it himself. He even made legal threats when other people do it to him, saying, I have asked you to stop contacting me, and continuing to do so may be a violation of the law. And yet, he stalked me online and even left comments on other people's YouTube videos when I so much as had a cameo appearance in one. Then in September of 2018, I did a live stream on YouTube where Nick followed me there yet again and started his harassment like usual. So I finally acknowledged him. Here's uh, Rickietta Law for $5, Maddox. Buddy, 
Will you come on my show? I don't know this guy. He follows me around everywhere. By the way, here's what I do know about this guy. He's a blackface lawyer. He paints himself in blackface. So yeah, I'm not, I don't want to talk to you, dipshit. I don't want anything to do with you. Fuck off. I made myself very clear that I didn't want him to contact me. The first four times I blocked him. If you block someone and they keep contacting you, that's harassment. So what did he do this time after I personally and directly told him not to contact me again? He sent me a letter to my fucking house, Sycamore. threatening to sue me for defamation because I called him a blackface lawyer. Nick Ricada, the free speech lawyer, threatening to sue me for my speech. Nick Ricada, everyone. In that letter, he claimed I made several false allegations that amounted to defamation because I called him a stalker and a blackface lawyer. But he insists that he has never practiced law in blackface, which is an interesting distinction to make. So apparently, sometimes he's in blackface, and sometimes he practices law, but he has never practiced law while in blackface. Got it. Nick asked me for either a public apology or to come on his live stream with him. I don't want to do his live stream because it seems like a vehicle for him to promote himself. Also, I suspect that he actually doesn't care that he was called a blackface lawyer because he publicly tweets things like, I'm never not in blackface. And to come full circle, he even did a podcast with the very person who said the N-word from earlier in this section, where Nick was presented with a blackface lawyer doll in his likeness. Mm, Ta-da! <laughs> That's funny. He didn't sue any of these people for defamation, so I have to conclude that he doesn't care and he made the legal threat to either try to silence me or to force me into doing an interview with him. To me, that seems like extortion, but I'm not a legal expert, so I have to assume Nick sincerely wanted an apology because stalking, harassment, and extortion are definitely crimes and could cost Nick his license to practice law. That would be a terrible thing if he lost his license due to stalking and harassment. But since Nick wanted a public apology, I'm gonna give it to him. I want everyone who may have watched or heard me call Nick Ricada a blackface lawyer one time during a live stream in 2018 at the one hour and 47 minute mark in a two hour and 45 minute interview to know that I sincerely apologize. In fact, I went ahead and registered the domain Nick Ricada is not a blackface lawyer.com so you can help me right this wrong and spread my apology. I want to let as many people as possible know that he is not a blackface lawyer, especially his clients who may have had an adverse opinion of Nick based on what I said one time during a live stream in 2018. I want them to know that I didn't mean to imply that he was a lawyer who practiced law while in blackface. To anyone who may have thought that, my apologies. Although, it would seem to me that his clients would be more concerned with the fact that Nick has discussed their pending legal cases in public, like the time he said he had to convince a judge to overlook his client's deadline. Or the fact that his friend tagged him in a tweet announcing that he's going to masturbate to illustrated child porn. Everyone wants to fuck 17 year olds. I would think that's way worse, but what do I know? I'm not a blackface lawyer. And neither is Nick. But what I do know is that Nick and Fanboy's smear campaign against me was based entirely on a lie and has caused me damages. And if you had any doubt about how disingenuous their supposed outrage was about the N-word, Nick Ricada is now friendly with the person who said it. Um, he's talking about me. I said the N-word uh, on live air. Of course, it was in the pizza fund. It was behind a paywall and it wasn't. And nobody was hurt by it. The guy I said it to or said about it, he said he didn't care. Nick Ricada, thank you so much. Have a good one, Nick. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks. You should be horrified. So all the theatrics and pearl clutching bullshit was a transparent effort to incite a mob to get them to attack my sponsors. And now I have actual damages from their lies, which Nick Ricada helped spread.